like notes through the hourglass, these are the songs of our lives. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Songs of Our Lives. I am Brad Rose. I am a musician, a composer, a writer, the founder of Foxy Digitalis, and somebody who thinks about music and sound far more than is healthy. Each week I invite on a guest to talk about the songs and the music that has been with them along their journey in life. Something like that. This week is kind of one of those like pinch me episodes. I can't believe this is real. Uh, my guest is Matsuna Roberts, who they are so many things as <laughs> I say in the actual like intro here in a few minutes. I mean, they're a musician, a composer, a multidisciplinary artist, a storyteller, a performer, a, a so many things like they do so much. And, uh, I am a great admirer of all of it. The most recent album of theirs and the latest chapter in the coin coin series. So coin coin chapter five in the garden. It's, it's an album that's been out for, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let me do the math like seven, eight months or so. And I still like, I, I feel like I've, started to scratch the surface of it. It's just such an incredible work. I'm like the whole series has been wonderful. And I've had people ask me, you know, they're like, I've been wanting to check it out. I don't know where to start. You can kind of start anywhere. I, you know, it's always good to start at the beginning, but this as much as I have loved every one of them, this one has kind of hit me the hardest. So, um, there's just so much to unpack. And the, and the ensemble on it is tremendous. And yeah. So, they are, they're just incredible. And this was, this was so much fun. This was, um, they were at the airport getting ready to go to Canada for some shows. Like literally we recorded this while they were in the airport. And frankly, that kind of rules. I think that adds like a really kind of fun, different, um, vibe to it in a way. So yeah, like I said, we recorded this recently, had an absolute blast. I hope you all enjoy it too. Uh, my guest today is a musician, a composer, multidisciplinary artist, a uh, storyteller, performer. I could go on and on and on. Um, thank you for being here, Matana Roberts. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, and, and my name is actually Matana. Matana. Okay. Yeah, Matana. It's not your fault. It's my parents. And I, <laughs> I used to not correct people. And because I haven't corrected people, they're are folks saying my name a million different ways. So I tell people that if I've corrected you, it's because I like you. And if you hear someone else pronounce it wrong, I probably still like <laughs> That's horrible, but that's the truth. I love it. I love it. Um, well, before we get into it, one thing I really just want to say that I have appreciated um, over the last, I don't know how long, is how you're like sort of, transparency and honesty and vulnerability on like when you post stuff on social media, because I feel like I have learned a lot just from the things that you've talked about. And recently last month, one of you said something that was like, if you get support for something, that's like a lift off, but it is up to you to stay in the air. And it was something I needed to hear in that moment. So I just wanted to say, thank you. No, I appreciate that. I'm trying to do my best to, be myself in these weird spaces. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, I don't have anything to lose in a sense. So at this point, <laughs> so I just feel like might as well let it all hang out. I, yeah, I, uh, I think so. I, so I'm, I've been trying to do that too. It's like this, you know, it, what else are we going to do in the 2024? Right. Things are just, I know, right? just fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's get into this. Cause like I said, you're at the airport. And I am. <laughs> we are. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna do this. Yeah, that would um, be awesome. <laughs> so, to start, as ever, what is the first song that you remember? 
Uh, that was, I put down Albert Eiler's Bells. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so Bells is, so did, I, I'm get, did you grow up, like, was this kind of stuff in the house? Yeah, so my parents were really big into avant-garde music because they said what? that it supported the revolutionary spirit of the time. That's what they said later, but, but my parents were also really young. My mother was 18, my father was 20 when I was born. So I kind of got to grow up with them a little bit, and they wow. really were into experimental music. They uh, were both born and raised in Chicago, and Chicago was a really interesting place for that, so... Yeah, we were always around that, and it was books, records, books, records, secondhand stores, garage sales, books, records. That was the thing. Okay. And my dad would buy used speakers and set them up through wherever we were living, so that there's a speaker in every room, so that you could hear oh sound. We would go to speaker stores to <sighs> test out, have no money, but go to speaker stores to sit in the fancy speaker room. <laughs> to hear some of my parents' favorite records, just to hear, which I thought everybody did that. I thought that was like a <laughs> family thing. And it wasn't until I got older and I, I shared that memory and people were like, whoa. <laughs> like, oh. Wow. I love that idea of speakers in every room. Oh my gosh. I want to, yeah. I want to I do that in my old, old speakers, but yeah, yeah. it still, it still, still works so that you never lose track of the song, no matter where you were. In the apart, I mean, we always were renting and moving around a lot, but apartment or house or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I, Bell, that's incredible. Like what a, a yeah, that was in, intense. That was very formative, <laughs> and it actually it. I remember my father actually said, "I'll never forget." He was like, "Matina, this is jazz," <laughs> and then he put on this record, and I was maybe six, six or oh. seven, wow. and and I. My dad was a bit of a tyrant when it came to like discipline, listening, and made me listen to the entire thing. And I remember being, I just said, I don't want to have anything to do with whatever that is. I don't have anything to do. So, for, I mean, it, for the longest time, I turned away from improvising dad's music because <laughs> that memory, because I didn't understand the music at the time. So, I sure. went head first towards classical music because I thought, oh, everything is there it's clear mm-hmm. no surprises which is a very ignorant thing to say but as a kid yeah. that's what that's how i felt that's amazing oh my gosh i love that that's um i have a daughter who's 10 and <laughs> i have it's um i go back and like i've exposed her to a lot of stuff but then i bet i bet i bet she also loves just pop music which is great too because like I'll, that's you know, awesome it's um but it's like i don't want to push her in anything it's whatever <laughs> I will, I will go with you and I will give you things along the way, but. And hope uh, for the best. And they come, yeah. it comes full circle. Look at me, man. Right. <laughs> I never want anything to do with this. So. I never want anything to do with it. And now it's how I make my living. Right. So, you know. It's, it's the way the world works sometimes. Yeah, totally. Um, well, what's uh, what's a song that makes you cry? <sighs> I didn't, let's see, when I said, at first I was like, no, I don't have a song that makes me cry. And then I was like, that's just too, that just brings up a lot of different things. Um, I'm pulling up the document. Oh, and so this is a weird one, but the, The entire album of uh, Chance the Rapper, The Coloring Books Mixtape. Oh, what? Yeah. I was checking that record out. I was at a residency in the south of France uh, when I got word that my father had passed away. And I was listening Mm -hmm. to that record. And my father was born and raised in Chicago. And Chance the Rapper is very much Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. And I felt like... And I mean, even Kanye is on that record. He's very problematic. And I'm really disappointed in him. But... uh, there's a very Chicago ethos on that record. And so in a weird way, it was nice to hear. I mean, my father didn't listen to hip hop, but it was just nice to hear yeah. something from his home city with, with younger people that had the same spirit that I feel like he had. There was a certain sort of Chicago youth spirit that just gets passed mm-hmm. through generations. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so now when I hear that record, I do get a little whistle because my dad was also a big Francophile. He was a scholar and he was really into France and French and French history and all these things. And just to coincidentally be in France and get that news and yeah. be walking the streets of this little French village <laughs> listening to that record. Um, it makes me a little teary eyed when I hear it now. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I absolutely adore this record. So that, like having it tied to that, I can, yeah. Um, it is, it is such a, like, I, I've been to Chicago many times. I didn't grow up in Chicago, but I love Chicago. It's one of my favorite places in the world. And yeah, this is such Well, you a know Chicago. what I'm talking about, because you're a Midwesterner, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in, well, I'm in Oklahoma. Nobody knows what the hell we are. Midwest, South, South. Yeah, no one ever knows. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a there's this sort of Midwestern thing mm-hmm. that's just very, very, very special. It's yeah. like salt, salt of the earth people. And yeah. I feel like that spreads through no matter the many differences. You know, yeah. Chicago, at least when I spent a lot of time there, was one of the most segregated cities in the country. However, there's some sort of spirit. There's just something mm-hmm. about um, that place and so that's a nice memory for me yeah wow well on the flip side of that what's the song that will put you in a better mood I I was saying that that changes for me a lot but I, I like everything that Klein is doing yeah. and I, I picked one particular track of hers called Black Thames mm-hmm. which I think was just a um, single release I just I just love I I love her period and I just love her creativity. I love also her spirit and her energy that really comes through her music. Yeah. I feel like her music it's so like complex and so um, like moving but she makes it feel sort of effortless. And it's I, I don't know. I I was obsessed this when this came out this record that came out last year I listen to it so much because it's just she's so special she's just yeah. really special yeah. yeah and i and i it's it's so I, I tell people about her they're like what is it i'm like it's hard for me to articulate but just listen to it and <laughs> right 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 um well that's awesome i i can definitely see that well here's everybody's favorite question which i know you had a hard time with but i have very what? hard time with it <laughs> <laughs> so what is objectively the, the best song of all time i mean and there is just, there's no answer yeah, i love how you tried to explain like you said like <laughs> imagine if you were talking to an alien but i am of the opinion that the aliens are way smarter than us well that's... they don't need an explanation they telepathically know how we feel so we don't have to explain <laughs> to them so i couldn't really think of anything and then i like i really hate genre but then i was like yeah. oh should i pick a genre like what should i I do. And then I, you know, because I make records and all my friends make records then I'm, I'm like, Oh, but what if I choose something that like upsets? Them? So I couldn't do it. I just I, couldn't. I, couldn't just do I, it. I'm, I mostly like to ask this question. Cause I like, I feel like you can learn something about how people's brains work a little bit just to see how, cause I wish. Yeah. It's, it's because it changes because you know what I've learned so far in my life so far is that your ears change, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like your ears and what you listen to. Like I used to hate, um, all those mid fifties, uh, Coltrane on those Miles Davis records. I used to really <laughs> dislike those. I'm just like, what is, he sounds really, unsure of himself and that's not the john coltrane that i know when i listen to other stuff so what is this stuff as my ears change and as my ability to deal with my instrument change i realized how special it was that he left us a gift where we get to hear an arc yeah. we get to hear like a, a real development and it's a it's a shame that we never got to see where else he was gonna go right. post but um so i so I think like that. And I, um, I used to love listening to the saxophonist Cannonball Adderley. Mm -hmm. I can't listen to his sound anymore. It's actually too much. It's very happy sound. It's too much for me. (laughs) Uh, You know, it's not, uh, there's something, you know, so it's interesting thing. And the same with singers and singer Mm -hmm. songwriters and 
there's some music that I that I really don't like and I maybe my ears will I don't like the Beatles. Maybe my ears will change. Maybe right. I will like I hate Metallica. Maybe <laughs> my ears it could cha- it could change. It, you never know. You never know. Yeah. No, I, I do think that's really interesting because like I, I have similar experience when I was younger, like later Miles Davis. I, I just wasn't ready and I didn't like it and I didn't and then now as I've you know, my ears have changed and everything has changed. Like, I love that stuff. And so, yeah, I think that's a really interesting way to look at it. Interesting. Um, well, what what's a song you used to love, but you heard it recently or you think about it now and it doesn't really do it for you? Okay. Best song of all time. A song that doesn't really do it for me. How did I know? Oh, oh I was talking about Elian Radig. Who knew? Mm-hmm. Is an incredible um, composer, musician. I, I don't know how to quite right. describe her. Electroacoustic explorer. Um, these very beautiful long form pieces. At this point, I love listening to textural work, and I hear more in texture than I do in any kind mm. of melodic sense. So I find everything that everything in her for over very calming for my nervous system. Yeah. But that the particular the Jets on Mila part two, I actually find really agitates me. And I don't know why. And I That's would like really to get to the bottom of, of what that is. And in my own work I'm trying to spend a lot of time studying what sound does to the body. Um mm-hmm. working with a lot of Different, I don't know, um, soundscapes, textures. Oh, Play, playing is... more, playing a lot of percussion. Like I'm doing stuff I normally, I'm nervous that I'm going to be like <laughs> at Burning Man in a couple of <laughs> years or something. You know, because I'm, yeah. I'm, seek, I'm seeking out those instruments that you don't plug in, that everything is mm. human um, mm. driven. And what is that doing to the human body? So lots of sh- chimes, bells, water drums. Uh, I've got a collection of um, hand pans right now. And I'm just like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I've shaken, wow. you know, uh, tambourines and it, it, everything that can give me like real nuance so I can really yeah. connect it to the body. That's really, that's like speaking my, like that's something I've been thinking about a lot is like the sort of the physical effects of sound on our bodies and thinking about it too, in the terms of just like natural sounds. And um, I did this piece last year that was about like, it was, I amplified this pile of leaves and had a bunch of people get in it and started basically bringing the volume down, trying like, as the performance was going on to get people to think about, you know, as we are basically destroying this world. These sounds are going away and think about you go outside and there's, you don't hear any birds or you don't hear all you hear is. And, but then I, the physical and mental effects that has like on us. And yeah, I think about, I don't know. I think about sound and cause you know, sound is like the first thing we experience in the womb. And they say that it, hearing like sound is or hearing is the last of our senses to go at the end. And yeah, I yeah, it's a fascin. Uh, it's really fascinating to think about what is music, what is sound, and mm-hmm. I I really like pushing the edges of what that can be. But it's also such a privilege to be able to hear someone. I got a chance to work yeah. with a little bit is the amazing deaf sound artist Christine Sun Kim, who hears mm. through vibration. Yeah, and that just really. Ch- I mean, she's completely changed my life and my conception of what sound could be and how do you feel sound versus mm-hmm. how do you read sound? How do you hear? Like there's so many different ways to hear actually. Yeah. Um, and I never thought about that before until coming into contact with her. That's amazing. Well, if you're out there at Burning Man with like a whole bunch of drums. And hand- <laughs> I hope like- it never happens. <laughs> 
hey. Brad, listen, I I don't have time for that. Kind. I'm like, I'm trying to like mellow on out as I get older. I'm not trying to completely turn myself inside out, but you never know. You never know. You never know. Oh, no uh, offense to any burners out there, but I like, I'm not, that's not my Steve. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, what's a song that most people, some group of people, people don't like, people hate it, but you don't care. You love it anyway. I like that Sam Smith's, um, Kim Petra unholy yeah. song. Yeah. <laughs> I like the hook and I like the sample and I, I had an ex partner who would make fun of me for liking Sam Smith. Anyway, I like Sam Smith. I think Sam Smith is, I, I appreciate the honesty of which Sam Smith is trying to yeah. come forward, but pop music has gotten weird where you can see how one artist is influencing the next artist and so, and so, and so, and so like in a quicker way than I feel like it, was in the past so i question kind of some of sam smith's like authenticity mm. with that song but i love that song it's just it's like really it's pretty vulnerable and pretty in your face and i enjoy music like that and i like the way the visuals are freaking people out like i just love right <laughs> Like, yeah, the video is wild. Doing? The video is wild. I was like, whoa, you know. I remember the first time I saw, I think it was like the Purple Rain video on MTV, and we thought that was out, or right. Madonna, Madonna's like a virgin or whatever. Well, like, oh my yeah. God. No, we're we we're way past all that. Oh, now. I yeah, I mean, remember when they like banned the was it the like a prayer video got banned because it was too like sexy yes. or race and and yeah compared now it's like oh that's like hysterically i PG. when i was in grade school a group of friends and i who were all kind of like latchkey kids decided to enter the school talent show doing a lip syncing to like a virgin and we i'll never forget being at the auditions we were too we were too young to really understand what the lyrics meant we just really liked madonna yeah, and I remember we did our little routine and sang our little song, and the te- the look on the teachers' faces I'll never forget, and they were just like immediate, <laughs> immediate no, absolutely not, no. And then our parents got called, and I remember I got in a lot of trouble for that because we we were like, oh, like a virgin, okay. Yeah. We don't. We don't, we don't, that's don't know what that cool. means. We don't know what that means. We just really like Madonna. Madonna was so rad, you know. So it's so funny that. That's incredible. Oh, wow. Um, that's I, yeah, I love that. <laughs> uh, well, um, <laughs> this is kind of, fun. what's the most romantic song? There's a lot to choose from, and, uh, but uh, one I kept going back to is Kelsey Lou. Um, I think she goes by Kelsey Lou now. I think when she first showed up on the scene, she was Kelsey Lou McJunkin or Lou Lou McJunkins, I can't remember. But her initial EP, which I think was like 2015 or 2016, um, I got a chance to see her live when she kind of first showed up. Mm. And it was it's amazing watching people that you see for the first time and you're like, oh, that, <laughs> that person has that thing. Like, they have that thing. And... Yeah. She's an incredible vocalist, an incredible cellist. She's now do film, um, scoring films and doing all sorts of interesting things. She's very much a shapeshifter. And I just really love that song. It's really honest and it's really beautiful. Yeah, that's a really good pick. I'm, I, yeah, there's, this is a question that I find really hard because I think there's, like, I'm there's kind so of a many. sucker for a love song. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, cause that's a really good one. That was only kind of on my radar. And then until this and that, yeah, it's like a rabbit hole. I'm going to go down. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, okay. Well, on a totally different tangent, what's a song that changed your perspective on an artist, either for better or for worse? Well, the entire Joni Mitchell's Don Juan's Reckless Daughter record <laughs> oh, where she's yeah. on the cover in blackface. Like I just couldn't, 
And it it's, wasn't so much that it existed, but it's her commentary posted. Even yeah. even now, the way she'll speak about it is if it was that it was still OK. And no offense to Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell is a legend. You know, all these things. Were. Sure. I mean, to be honest with you, I was going back between her and then Patti Smith's rock and roll inward and i couldn't decide which one <laughs> i was gonna choose and i i like patty very much i've met her a few times so i was like let me let me pick someone i don't i've never met and i um and and patty smith has apologized for that song and she doesn't sing it anymore but joni mitchell's explanation of this kind of oh. Black facing bolstered by some of the black musicians that are on that record. I mean, yeah. Wayne Shorter's on that record. Shaka Khan is on that record. Um, but I just, I have a very thin, very short fuse for white women in blackface, for white people. And but I just, yeah. I can't not, I'm not able. And the first track is something like the cotton something something. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's. And I just couldn't do And I was like, wow, okay, the 70s, people were doing lots of stuff. And, you know, everything must have sounded interesting and people were exploring. Um, but what I haven't liked is the way many years later, she still kind of passes it off as, you know, right. experimentation and doesn't see anything wrong with taking right. on a persona as a, you know, as, as what is a um, a... A, a, a body that's constantly hunted, the, the body of the black mm -hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I just have a really hard time with it. Yeah, it's been, it, that's the thing. Like the fact that, like you said, like she still now doesn't see that. That's what really she, kind of She doesn't. Me. And it's, and, and on the one hand, I'm just like, well, it's Joni Mitchell and she's done amazing things. And, and mm -hmm. I've fought with people about, over some of her, like, I'm not one of those big rabbit fans, but I think her voice is really important. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, I have a whole, I really have a hard time with the whole seventies uh, electric jazz period. Like I, mm -hmm. I have a hard time with that stuff. Um, yeah. 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 I think I, there, I don't know. It's a couple of weeks ago, or sometime last recently. Yasmin Williams, the amazing guitarist, did a whole thread on Twitter about this, and I knew a lot of people who weren't even aware of it. That just that, so that surprised me, and it really shocked a lot of people. And um, and I was really, I, I really appreciate like what yeah, you know, and she was going on talking, showing things like you know, yeah, she still doesn't really see a problem with it and he doesn't was, get it yeah <laughs> um, and that's the thing you know i mean and it's uh, i don't know that's the part i mean it's all there's lots <laughs> a lot of problems of course because well, i mean everybody has a record they're embarrassed yeah. that they made like that's cool it's cool right. to talk about that but if you owe somebody an apology because you're doing something that's i'm inherently racist i don't care how mm -hmm. many black people are on the record um right. you should talk you know she yeah. could talk about it in a different way, and the refusal just grates me. Yeah, no, I totally, totally get that. I'm totally right there with you. Um, well, what, what are some of your favorite lyrics? Whether it's a song, a line in a song. Um, that they were. So, uh, this was a hard one because I'm, I'm one of those people. I don't hear lyrics so much as I hear. Mm the instrumental textures, like it takes a yeah. lot for me to hear. But what I ended up choosing was Michelle Undigayo Cello's God Fear Money, Ooh, yeah. um, which I can't remember which, I have so many of her records. Like I, her lyrics always burn. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they're searing, like they're so full of love and truth that they like, they delineate a straight line forward in a way that no one else I know do, like she does. She's a, she's very much uh, in her own lane with that. And it's beautiful. And just such a killer bass player. Oh my God. Yeah. I love her. Love her record last year that I. That's oh, beautiful. That so good. Um, yeah. No, this, I, I really, yeah. I, I, she doesn't come up very often on this show and it kind of bums me out because oh. I, 
I'm a huge fan and it's like, oh, I want to talk about her more, but um, yeah, I've, I mean, she's, she's become a friend, which I really appreciate, which also was really shocking. I remember the first time she reached out to me and I was like, this is definitely not the real Michelle and cello. I don't know who this is, <laughs> but this, you, you know, this is, I don't know who this is, but she's been always been really supportive and, um, I remember being a kid, I think her video came on back to back to Prince in TV and it was that boyfriend song. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember standing there going, who is that? And what, like, what is she, what is she doing? She looks really interesting. She looks really cool. Um, and so it's been really, her arc has been really interesting too. Mm -hmm. watching that she's heavily committed to being a great musician like that's yeah. the foundation that's her foundation foundation and and she mentions no you know <laughs> small words about that um but she's also i will say she's one of the most humble <laughs> arts people that i've ever met in my life um wow. i've got so many stories it would fill a whole podcast so <laughs> But she's um, she's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah, I I just I have endless admiration for her and the sort of path that she has charted, and it's so it feels so singular, and it's um, yeah, it's remarkable. So that's yeah. awesome. So this next section, I th I think you answered all of them. Okay, and it, it was supposed to be a pick two thing, which is totally fine. So we're gonna kind of oh, do a, we're gonna do a okay. rapid fire. We're gonna do rapid. Okay. Fire. Okay. <laughs> so, what song have you or can you listen to the most? Anything Sade. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is the last song that you completely fell in love with? Oh, God. Um, <sighs> the last song that I completely fell in love with. Oh, uh, that's a hard one because I'm constantly <laughs> listening to music. Um, the last that's, song. That's one thing that I also love about like just like your Twitter account or whatever is I can t is yeah, you always are checking stuff out and it's all kinds of stuff. And I that just speaks to my core and I love it. And I yeah, and I love that you share stuff because I think I've discovered plenty of stuff that I really love because of that and that's oh I'm so glad because I I used to hate social media makes me feel like there, there was a time where I just want to take a shower after having right. dealing with these apps that get me feel so grimy and I've never been able I have a hard time promoting myself directly mm -hmm. but I love talking about other people's stuff like hey have you checked this out you, you do this yeah. but then I end up then I end up trauma dumping on people too. Especially. <laughs> like I'm just at this point, it's like, take it or leave it. I'm doing the best I can. But, uh, but to answer that question, I just thought of, um, Halado Negro's new record oh, and the song best for you and me that he put out this really lovely video. Yes. I love the song. I love, I love the sound that he's staying really committed to. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm biased. He is a friend, but I, I just, I really love the music that he's making. Same. I love that record so much. And that, yeah, that song and that video and he's yeah, it's just, beautiful. He's just a wonderful human being. He was on here a couple months ago and it was just such a sort of beautiful oh. experience. <laughs> and sorry. And I missed what I actually said and that, and it was, I can't pick one song, the entire record of love and exile, Vijay oh. Iyer. Um, yeah. uh, Arouge Aftab and Shazad Ismaili. I love that entire record. Everything down to the mix. It's just perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect record. Too. Yeah, that record. I when I remember when it got announced and just knowing like the three of those musicians, it's like, oh, this is going to be really good. And then it just blew all of my ex expectations out of the water it's interesting because when i heard it i was like this is a beautiful studio record it probably will sound different live then i heard them live it's the same thing it's just beautiful wow. it's That's a beautiful amazing. sonic exploration that they're doing yeah I, oh, I love that record um 
Okay, well, what cover song is better than the original? Okay, I got a little snarky about this going on about Tracy Chapman's <laughs> Fast Car versus Luke Combs. And, I'm glad and that I, you're bringing this up. <laughs> okay, because I, I tell you, I got so pissed off when someone said to me, when I, when I brought it up, uh, a younger musician, they said, oh, but it's so nice that he did that for her. And it's like, oh. yeah, it is, it is nice, actually. I need to think about that. It, it is nice that he did that for her. Um, but it pisses me off that it took that long (laughs) for that song to get the tracking, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it was popular when it came out. It wasn't like it was an unpopular song, but I just feel like when she showed up, they didn't know what to do with her. And I feel like they really wasted her time, the the (laughs) corner of the music industry that she was dealing with and the, the only thing that made me happy about that Luke Combs situation is that Tracy Chapman you know she owns her publishing on that mm-hmm. and is raking in the residuals as she should be um and that and that made me really happy yeah that was and it, oh sorry and his version is not bad yeah it's but, weird it's like one of those things that I, I don't know that's one of those songs that if you're gonna cover it I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just you just can't touch. It's one of those you can't. It's like if you're gonna cover it, you have to. It's like hearing people sing the Star Spangled Banner at the Super Bowl, and the perfect, the per. I mean, I go back and forth. Well, at least at the Super Bowl, Whitney Houston's rendition is the like it's perfect, and every vocalist that you heard sing it since they always make a nod to Whitney Houston and some of the lines they're singing, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting. And then my other favorite of the Star Spangled is uh, Marvin Gaye, but he was singing at like a boxing match. It's amazing. re edition of the Star Spangled Banner. I don't know if I... God, and I don't mean to... I don't want to bring up patriotic songs. This is not... I'm not (laughs) a patriotic person. But I do pay attention to, you know to all different types of music so it's uh, covers are weird yeah doing covers are weird yeah i mean it's like i feel like if you're gonna do a song like this do it totally in a different way or something i don't know it's just it, it feels too i don't know i will give him credit for at least not changing the gender and it's like i hate when people do that where if it's like a song by a woman and then a guy sings it. Oh, that's it. true. No, he kept it. And to be honest with you, like I, you know, I thoroughly checked him out when all that stuff was going on, and he seems like a really lovely person. And he, I was like, his parents raised him right. Like yeah. he, when you saw him sing with Tracy Chapman, at, I haven't <laughs> watched the Grammys in ages, but I watched this one. And I, same, <laughs> right? I was like, no, I'm just gonna wait for the clips. Like, no, I'm gonna watch and when they sang together like the awe you could feel yeah. his awe through the screen yeah that he I, was at, he was really giving her her moment and not taking it away from her it definitely made me appreciate him more because yeah, yeah you could just same. tell it was this moment of holy shit i am on stage with tracy <laughs> chapman, <laughs> and, chapman. <laughs> and, who and rarely she, comes out to sing yeah. or play and who sounds exactly the same. Sounds it was just exactly beautiful. It was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad I, yeah. I, when I saw this on your list, I was like, Oh good. I want to talk about this. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, <laughs> well, what is the sexiest song? I was going back and forth about that too. Cause like all those Prince B sides. And then <laughs> I was thinking, I have issues with Beyonce. Like I, it's important. I, it's important that she exists. I'm glad that kids again have lots of choices. I sometimes mm-hmm. question her, her brand of feminism. I'm not sure mm-hmm. sometimes what it is, or it seems really conservative to me at times. So, and very gendered. Um, and sometimes in her music, I feel like she's trying to implore on us that she is 
not queer, that she is heterosexual, heterosexual, heterosexual in all these songs. And that kind of yeah. drives me a little crazy. <laughs> but, but then I have to remember some of the songs actually are kind of genderless. Like she's, she uses the music to shape shift and to try on, on different personas. So I really like Drunken Love. Like that yeah. was cute, but also, I don't know, like the, uh, uh, God, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but like drunk sex, that's not really a lot of fun. Like I, <laughs> that's not, Right. that's not fun sex like that you you don't remember stuff like that's yeah. just not a good time <laughs> but i appreciate the way in which she's saying that this like very grown song right about, about drinking i've been drinking i've been <laughs> drinking you know as if that's like a you right. know, the kids the kids listening to that song will grow up and realize oh no you don't want to be drinking yeah, drinking you don't <laughs> That's not what you want to be doing. So I'll just leave that there because that could go. And and that brings us to Tyla's water, who I I have issues with Tyla, but I like the I like the metaphor and the tongue in cheek of that song. It's a fun yeah. song to, to dance to. Yeah, the the bass and like the rhythm on that song are just oh, I love it. Sexy yeah. as hell. Like it really is. It really is. Um, yeah. Okay. What is what's the best hype song? I picked Energy by the um, electronic duo Disclosure, yeah. which is it's a pretty old song, but I I have like a playlist of hype songs for myself mm. when I'm working out or doing different things, and I just really I just really like that song, and I love I love house music and house mm. music beats. Yeah. Also, so that's yeah. um. I just think about this song and I start to get hyped. So I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, it, yeah. Especially like the second half kicks in and it's just. Oh, it's awesome. so great. Yeah. It's amazing. Great. Okay. Well, we got through the, the quick fire. Now we got the last two songs. All right. Or, um, last two questions, I guess. Either way. Uh, so, what's the song that means the most to you? And not necessarily the song itself, but because of you associate it with something or someone. I, t- I talked about uh, the band, the Silver Mountain Zion and their 2004 EP, the pretty lightning paw. The, uh, the song I picked was uh, microphone in the trees. Um, if it wasn't for Montreal, Canada, like I wouldn't be doing half the things that I get to do. And a lot of those people, they're the reasons that I started exploring graphic notation and different ways of thinking about sound. Uh, because they kind of opened my, they reopened my eyes up to like what the essence of sound is as an oral tradition. Um, and what you hear in that music is, is like, it's very honest music. Yeah. Um, and it's very collective music, like the spirit of collectivity in Montreal in particular and around that crew of people it circles out not only from the music, but into the community, into um, all sorts of areas of civic life there and cultural life there. And they've managed to build a whole global stage around that. That's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so those folks are really, you know, we go back and forth. And that was the crazy thing about your first question, because uh, Albert Eilers Bells was on ESP disc and Coin Coin almost came out on ESP. Oh, wow. And, yeah, that's a long story, silly story. <laughs> but Bernard Stolman took me out for lunch to try to convince me to uh, put put it out on ESP. And I was like, yeah, maybe I should do that. But that didn't feel right. And a musician jumped in front of me and were like, don't do, you know, ESP yeah. at that time. Um, so Constellation and Montreal and uh, the Canada and... Those people, they're like my fam. They're family. We fight and we fight and we love and we do all the stuff. And I just don't know what I'd do without them. So uh, I picked that, and then I picked TV on the radio's Nine Types of Light album, the particular song, second song, because of lyrics. I'm pretty certain. I need to ask them about this, but I'm pretty certain the the lyrics were written by Gerard Smith was the basis of that band who would pass away uh mm. not too long um can't remember if he passed away after that album was out or before and uh 
Gerard and I had a very special relationship, but the guys in that band have really looked out for me over the years. Um, but losing him was really difficult. He was one of the, when 9-11 happened, instead of running home, he ran towards the towers and volunteered and helped um, people. And from that, some cancer showed up, some sudden cancer showed up, some maybe like seven or eight years later that just completely um, took him from us. And he was the one friend that would always be complaining about the thing, the things he wasn't getting done in his music or the gear that he wanted to buy that he didn't have time to buy yet or didn't have enough money to buy. And I used to give him a hard time. I'd be like, Gerard, like we've got years of this. There's plenty (laughs) of time, you know, there wasn't plenty of time. It's almost as if he knew that his time was going to be limited. And, uh, and I'm, and when I'm in the doldrums, being like, oh, you know, maybe that one music professor was right. I should find something else to do. Or maybe, you know, some sort of, I remember how much he would want to be here making more music. And that keeps me together. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, well, last question, at least in this moment, what is your favorite song? Oh, I was talking. I could not I picked two. I've, I had a hard time with one, um, but I was checking out Mary Halverson's recording Cloud Word, and I particularly liked the track in Carnegie. Uh, and then I was also checking out uh, James Brandon Lewis's uh, Transfiguration. I love the entire records. Both of those musicians, Mary is someone who I really got to watch her develop her sound. She always had a really beautiful approach and sound. But I remember the first time I realized, oh, she has like, she has really codified this really beautiful stick. Um, uh, New, it's it's just, it's it's really hard to describe. And I'm just, I feel so privileged that I got a chance to have a peek at that. And then James, I just like the way he's, tried to navigate all the, you know, all the spaces, all the places and still Mm -hmm. managing to survive. And he plays with a lot of heart and I just love the things that he's doing. Yeah. I hadn't had, I hadn't had a chance to listen to Transfiguration yet. And so when I saw that on here, I put it, I went and listened to it and I, cause I love his stuff and I love the way, like you said, he plays with a lot of heart. Like he has such power and sort of control, but it's so much, there's so much emotion in it and it, it's beautiful. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Um, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a great record. And then, yeah, the Mary Halverson record. And I think that song, I think, isn't that the one that has Laurie Anderson on it? I think playing. I think, playing yeah, I, I, on that record. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, like that, you know, the, <laughs> I I don't know if I'd be able to speak if Laurie Anderson had ever said a single <laughs> word to me. So, it's, you yeah. know, it's just it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, those are, yeah, awesome. Well, this was so much fun. I so appreciate awesome. doing this here at the airport. Like this You're is a first. <laughs> I was um, like, oh, I have to cancel. It's like, no, we're not canceling. We're going to do this. I'm going to strategize look, we did it. and get it done. We did it. We got it done. Uh, do you have any like shows or anything coming up that you want to mention? Um, I know you're flying to Canada right I'll now to be, play. Right? I'll be in Canada this weekend. Uh playing but also just having a touch of downtime with the family people that i told you about it's it's Uh like it's a different kind of homecoming when i go there and i it's a city i've spent so much time in and it's one of those places where i land and i know where i want to go and what i want to do and who i want to see um and i'm in toronto on sunday and then Most of the things that I'm going to be working on now through the summer are more uh, of my visual artwork. But we're looking at trying to set up a tour of uh, CoinCoin Chapter 5 because I'd really like to celebrate the musicians on that record um, in in what we have left of the year. So I I always have things bubbling. I have to say I'm really bad at updating my website. But Constellation does a pretty great job for me right now. So that's yeah, that's awesome. I yeah, I really hope that I would love to see 
coin coin chapter five with the ensemble because it's so good and i i I would love for you to hear it with them because it was so special to all the records are special but it was special to be able to make this with those folks yeah and speaking i was so excited to see that darius was on the cover of the wire this month that's right i told I, i was like Darius, they're late, but you know what? Better late than never. Yeah. Darius is one of the most hardworking musicians that I know, and I'm just so proud to know him. And he's just going to continue to do amazing things. Yeah, awesome. Well, I will let you get your flight or get thank some you. Food or <laughs> and... I have to go through security. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, go do that. Okay. Thank you so much, and safe You're travels. Welcome. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Once again, so much gratitude to Matana Roberts for just doing this while they were at the airport. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess in some ways it's a good way to pass time at the airport, but still, that's like uh, that's just been a lot to me. Um, and and I think you can tell by the answers and how much thought and uh, you know I. I I love it when people just really dive into this format and have fun with it. And I love walking away from these feeling like I have a additional understanding of them as an artist and um, as a person and all of those things. I think that's awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm yeah. Check out their picks at the link in the show notes, the playlist. It's an extra long one since instead of picking two questions, they did that in the one section, they did all of them. And so, you know, we did the rapid fire and I was like, I'm just going to put them all on there because it's a lot of freaking great music. Um, so yeah, check that out. Go. And if you, if you haven't heard coin coin chapter five, or if you haven't heard any of them, like it's time, it's time. All right. And as for me, you know where to find me. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, you know, shoot me an email, um, and Patreon, patreon.com slash Foxy Digitalis for as little as three bucks a month. Help support the cause, and you get these episodes early. You get an extra whole section in them and um, other stuff, too. And, and if that's, you know, and if that's not for you, cool. Take those few bucks and put them towards picking up a copy of Coin Coin Chapter 5. That's it for me. I will be here again next week, and until then... Just keep on listening to whatever the hell you want.